On today's show, we're gonna be talking about this P1 RGB vlogger light that has some pretty neat tricks, like if you wanna pretend you're you know, running from the police or something. <laughs> at it at first glance and it's just a nice little flat panel LED. We've seen these things before. You can mount this on your camera, mount it on a light stand, whatever, and get a you know, reasonable amount of light out of it. But this one is RGB and not only is it RGB, it has some pretty neat tricks. Let's start by looking at the price of this though. The Andy Cine Vlogger Bowling P1 Pocket RGB LED Video Light comes in at $159. So this is not a cheap light. However, as you are about to see, it is chock full of features that justifies that price point. So let's start just with the build quality. This is tough. This is largely aluminum. There's certainly some plastic parts on here, but this is a largely aluminum build, and that is nice. It feels really, really solid in your hands. When I first took this out of the case, I was like, ooh, that's, ooh. It's a little on the heavier side because it's got metal, but ooh, that feels good. And that kind of metal build feel is something you want when you're dragging something around all over the world, banging into the trees and whatnot. Having that kind of good solid feel is, is kind of nice. It actually comes with a very nice, very robust industrial case on here. Slide that into there, fits in nice and neat. So you got this nice belt strap case that it comes with. I don't know how many people are really gonna wear it on their belt, but if you wanna do that, you certainly can. You have on here a array of buttons along with this nice little RGB scale here, but don't let that confuse you. It's not like a, ooh, touched it. No, this is just a scale. So if you know what color you want to go to, you can look at the color guide on here. Looking at the front of it, there's your RGB panel behind a slight diffusion panel. This odd looking contraption here is actually extremely cool. You can see quarter 20 taps on here. So there's a quarter 20 screw mount right there. If you turn it up this way, there's a quarter 20 there. There's another one there. But this thing does a couple of things. First of all, it rotates out like so. So you have you know, like a handle if you wanted to do it that way. Or you could put it all the way around this way and then it comes with a cold shoe adapter you screw into here and then you can mount that onto your camera. However, it also tilts this direction. So what that means is you can stand this up on a tabletop like so. So now you have the ability to prop it up and really, I mean, any way you want. This is you know, totally rotatable, um, nice, good, stiff joints in here. It's gonna hold its position wherever you put it. And I love that it has the ability to stand up on its own. I've had little panel lights where the bottoms are a little bit rounded, and so you set it up and it falls over. You know, kind of like your iPhone, you're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna set it up to, no, I just wanna set, no, I wanna set it up to, what? and you can't, right? I've seen RGB lights like that, you're like, come on, really? And sometimes they put a perfectly flat edge, sometimes they put buttons on the flat edge, but sometimes you have a perfectly flat edge, so it will stand up, but you can't tilt it. With this, you can tilt it. I love that, I love that I can tilt this, Tilt it up. I wonder, I didn't even try it. Could I tilt it? There you go. There's a slight tilt down on there, which is pretty darn cool. Kind of impressed with that. Now, I said that the arm on here is really nice and stiff. It, it holds its position very, very well. Wherever you put it, it stays there. The company realizes, has acknowledged that over time, the screws will come a little bit loose on here and you'll probably need to go in and tighten that to make it, give it that nice, good grip of feeling again. Um, well, they've not only thought of that, they've included a tool to fix that. When you open up the case in here, you have a little little thing here that says wrench, open. And you go, well, what's in there? And you open that up, and there is a teeny tiny little Allen key that is designed for tightening up the arm on here. So I think that's a nice little touch. It's, you know, little touches like that that tell you that they really put some thought into it. That's not the kind of thing you often see. Let's go through the buttons. So you've got on the top here a USB port for charging. It's USB-C. It will charge at a variety of charging uh, capacities, voltages, and it will do a fast charge. You also have on there your power switch, a set button that'll rock through to the different modes, a function slash rocker button here. So this is multifunction. You can push in and you can rock it up and down. And then this dial here is the dimmer. Turn it on with the power switch on the top. You can see it goes through a little boot up phase, takes a couple of moments in here. And right now what you're seeing is the mode. You can kind of see the lights flashing down there. It's what I opened the show with. It is going through its kind of special effects mode. So as I push the set button, it rotates through from a standard color temperature mode to a RGB mode. It's funny, it says HSI, or maybe it's meant to be HS lowercase l. It's, it should be HSL, hue, saturation, luminance, because you can control all three of them. So we're just gonna go with lowercase l and give them the benefit of the doubt on there. A little bit weird. Or maybe I stands for like illumination. I don't know, whatever. Point is, you have the ability to control the hue, the saturation, and the brightness. So in this mode, for example, if I push the function button in, it rotates between hue and saturation, and then you have your brightness is always here uh, dedicated on this dimming slider here. 
If I push it again, it goes back to the first, uh, the first special effects mode. So we'll, we'll save this for last because there's some fun stuff in there. Let's go back into the standard color temperature mode. So with the rocker, I can change the color temperature from 8,500. Let's just rise it up a little bit so you can see the colors coming through. Down to 2,500 there. I actually take the brightness down a little bit so it's not reflecting massively on the table. If I hit set again, it takes me to the RGB one. So let's take the brightness up a little bit on here. And you see your hue and then your saturation. So if I want to do a nice bright red, there's 360. And I can, of course, refer to the color chart over here. And as I roll through it, you'll see how it rotates through the colors on there. And of course, if you want to change the saturation of that, maybe make it a little bit less rich, you push this in, it switches to S for saturation, and now I can take that saturation level down a little bit. And you can see in there how it's getting a little bit less rich. And then again, of course, you have the brightness. And then the final mode here, hit set again, takes you into the special effects mode. So there's three of these in here. The first one is meant to be a lightning effect mode. And within these, there are three modes. You see it says C right now. As I use the rocker, it goes from mode A to mode B to mode C. So the mode A and B are supposed to be lightning effects. So if you wanted to simulate um, you know, lightning outside a window or something, that's the idea. A couple of random lightning patterns. One's a little bit faster than the other on there. And then the third mode in there, the C mode, is meant to simulate a television. So if you wanted to have someone being illuminated by a television on set, you could have that one in there. It just goes a kind of a light flicker, nothing really dramatic, adds a little bit of color, mostly white light meant to simulate a television set. That's kind of cool. Then you go to the A mode, and the A mode has three again, A, B, and C. The first one is a slow RGB rotation, so you can see that rotating through the RGBs now. If you um, cycle that down to B, it goes to a fast RGB rotation. And then C is meant to be candlelight or firelight. <laughs> And then the last one is one where I started the show on, and it is three different siren views. So A is supposed to be a police car lights. B is meant to be uh, ambulance, and C is meant to be fire trucks. Now, to be fair, I think that this the color patterns on those is not a universal setting. It's not like fire trucks and ambulances and police cars all have the same lighting all over the world, but it's a neat little setting in there. So if you wanna have that kind of a effect going on in your video, you've got it. And that's effectively it. Hey, if you like this show, hit the like button. If you like what I'm doing here, subscribe for me. And uh, do me another big favor and try and share the video. Hit the little share button below. That really helps me out, gets the word spread out there a little bit more. And, uh, and that's about that. So let's jump into the Q&A. For those of you watching live, stick around. We'll have a little Q&A session. For those of you not watching live, the Q&A is gonna pop up right here in just a moment. Thank <laughs> you.